How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome back to another episode of Don't Starve Together Mod Light in which I feature some of the mods in the past week that I have found the most entertaining or engaging or otherwise compelling. So to get started with we have the More Fruits mod. This mod it basically adds more fruits to the game as well as builds on a previous mod called Birds, Berries and Trees and Flowers for Friends. So there are a couple of concepts, a couple of items, I believe, in it that uh, actually ported over from that mod, but it adds a lot in its own right. So let's take a look at the configurations here. A lot of the additional fruits and stuff that were added, such as strawberries, grapes, tomatoes, oranges, lemons, limes, apples, and it is now water mod compatible. So you might recall the water mod that I featured in last week's episode. If you set this tr true, uh, it will actually be compatible with that mod. Now in the world that I've started with this mod enabled because just as a caveat here, uh, you do have to start a new world to make the more fruits mod work uh, because it has to have the map regenerated for all of these things to appear on it. Uh, the map that I currently am using that I generated for this does not have a water mod on it. So that's why I'm keeping that at false. Everything else is standard. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are, and here are a lot of the new assets that have been added to the game via the More Fruits mod. Now, I want to give credit where credit is due. This mod was created by somebody named either U Song or EU Song. Uh, it is a server mod, so in other words, it has to be enabled on the server. So right here we see a lot of the trees. Uh, apple tree, orange tree, lemon tree, uh, here we have a lime tree, and when we do have the axe, we can just go ahead and chop it down. I believe there are only two sizes of trees, but I could be wrong about that. There actually might be three. Let me just try this here. Like This is 15. This is going to be 15 uh, hits. Chop it down. This one it could be five, I believe. No, it's actually 10. Yeah, not exactly sure how that works. That one was 15 as well. Now, all of these trees only drop one fruit. I'm not sure if they drop more fruits during different seasons, but during the fall, I only see them dropping one fruit. So these are the limes. You can plant them much like you would any other seed from a tree, just like that. Uh, the animations, it doesn't appear that these things are animated, the little ones. I could be wrong about that, but I don't see them moving at all. Unlike, say, this fir tree here that's swaying. These big, the full-sized ones do animate slightly. Uh, so th th that covers the trees that have been added. Gives you an idea, there's quite a variety, but they all look very similar. And as you can see, the fruits look like they're just basically pasted over them. Now, I have seen them actually drop fruits as they shrivel up and die. So that might be something you want to keep in mind. Here we have a whole bunch of the berry bushes. So this is a tomato bush, strawberry bush. Uh, more strawberry bushes, more tomato bushes, and you can dig these up. So in other words, like this one, I already dug up and replanted, as you can see right there. But you dig them up like that, uh, much as you would with uh, other like berry bushes. And you can replant it back down, and then you can use fertilizer to get it to grow. And they all, all of them require fertilizer, so that's something you might want to keep in mind. Uh, these grape uh, bushes are actually some of the most unique ones, because when they're unfertilized, they actually appear like little withered vines like that compared to a full bush. So yeah, those are the grapes, strawberries, lots more strawberries and tomatoes. Now I did harvest uh, quite a few of these and the results of the harvest, I put in the ice box here. Well, some of it I did, right? There's strawberries, right? There's lime. I did cut down the lime. Uh, I also bundled a good deal of it to make sure it didn't spoil. Let's pick that up. Uh, so here were some of the recipes that I made using these new items. For one, we have ketchup. Um, Another one is the strawberry shortcake. Another one I made was wine. It looks like there are a total of 12 new recipes added to the game with this mod and the water mod enabled. Without the water mod, it's only nine new recipes. So you can use those new fruits from these trees to make unique recipes, as I pointed out here, such as the ketchup, the strawberry shortcake, and the wine. Those are the only ones I actually got around to making, but there are plenty of others. As I pointed out, like a total of nine, and there could be more coming in the future as well, depending upon how much the mod continues to be developed. Okay, the next mod we're going to be looking at is called Teleportation Scrolls by one Felix the Judge. I believe I have covered one of their mods previously. With the Teleportation Scrolls, you can teleport back to the town gate or the nearest telelocator. This mod does have configurations, and it comes in the form of a difficulty set setting. You can either 
either have it casual or hard and it will adjust the amount of resources required as well as the type of machine you need to actually prototype those scrolls. So let's get started and take a look at that. Okay, we're back in the game and you can see it's night right now. I did use the easy setting for these scrolls and that means that we will be requiring a cartographer's desk to craft them. As you can see, when I step up to the cartographer's desk right there, uh, we have a little tab here that is it's lit, uh, has the prototyping light bulb available on it, but none of these can actually be prototyped. So in other words, you always have to be next to a cartographer's desk to, pro, uh, to build, to craft the easier uh, version of these recipes. So we have two different ones. One's called the Scroll of Origination, which takes you back to the uh, Florid Postorn. Okay, so I have the components now to build both the Scroll of Telelocation as well as the Scroll of Origination. It's going to build both of those, and then we're going to go ahead and march away a bit here from the base. I have built the telelocator focus right there, and we're going to try out each of them. And I'm also going to be building an additional telelocator focus because I want to show exactly how the uh, game prioritizes which telelocator focus you're going to be uh, teleporting to when you use the scroll of teleportation or is it yeah it's the scroll of tele telelocation now you might recall in a previous episode i covered a mod which uh sort of updated the telelocator staff so that i wouldn't burn gems when you uh, used on the telelocator or when transporting when activating the telelocator this is even easier so in other words let's go ahead use the telelocation teleport and as you can see, we just pop up right here. This telelocator focus was the one I just built, which means that this mod still telelocates you back to the nearest focus. So that covers the scroll of teleportation, but then we also have the scroll of origination. We can just click that, right click it, and it will take us back to the florid postern, just like that. Now, in terms of these recipes, I've mentioned it before, but the cost of them varies depending upon the difficulty that you have configured this mod for. When you have it configured for easy, this scroll of telelocation is available at the cartographer's desk and it requires one feather pencil, one papyrus, and one purple gem, whereas the scroll of origination requires one feather pencil, one papyrus, and one compass. Okay, this next mod that I'm going to be covering is still much a work in progress, but I think it shows some interesting potential, and I like the concept behind it. It is called Artificial Wilson by King of Town. It's operating under the premise that you can allow the game to play itself for you. It works much better in theory than it does in practice, and it is still quite rudimentary to the point that uh, the mod does not actually even have uh, a workshop image uploaded for it yet. But let's resume the world and we'll take a look at what the Artificial Wilson mod can do so far. Now this mod is not strictly limited to Wilson. It will apply to any character you're actually playing and once it's enabled you can click on your sanity meter and you'll notice that it starts flashing. And all of a sudden, without having my hand on the keyboard, Wilson will start randomly walking around. I'm not controlling anything he's doing here. I'm not using the keyboard. He's just walking along like this. Now, I'm not exactly sure of the formula that is used to generate the walking, but apparently he just basically goes in four directions, or maybe maybe he actually is more like eight directions. But he's just going to keep walking along like that. He doesn't interact with anything. He doesn't really do anything useful. But if you just need to fool somebody into thinking that maybe you aren't away from the keyboard, who knows, it could be useful in that way. Uh, so you wouldn't actually have to leave the world, and yet you could still be marching around the place, making it look as if, hey, I'm not going to be the biggest sucker that you can just whack and then take all my stuff. Well, who knows? It's an idea. Of course, it has to be enabled on the client so the utility of this mod is debatable but it's an interesting concept and that is what initially drew me into covering it to disable the mod if you're sick of it just click on the sanity meter again and wilson will stop walking and this sanity meter will stop flickering last but not least and this will be a good test to see how well you are paying attention and how far you got into this video we're covering a mod called chester for everyone by Zarklord. It allows each player to obtain a Chester or even more than one. 
So this mod is configurable. It is a server-based mod. Uh, if we go over here into the configuration for it, there is a crafting difficulty, which controls the amount of resources that is required to craft the eye bone. There is the machine to craft. You can have none. You can have tech one, tech two, magic one, magic two. That basically is like, um, this is science machine. This is alchemy engine. This is the pre hat still pater and the shadow manipulator. Uh, then you can also have the max number of chesters, which means how many chesters is a player allowed to craft. You can go from one all the way up to 10. Let's really push the boundaries here and apply 10 and then resume the world and we'll see how it looks in game. So you may have noticed in the previous mods that I covered, I was actually walking around here the whole time with a couple of chesters following me because guess what? I have two eye bones and I am going to be unlocking everything here with the console so we can craft more eye bones. Now the eye bones are very available in the tools section and at the very easy level that we have here, it requires two twigs, one rope, and two gold. Obviously, you can increase the difficulty of this, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to craft all the way up to 10. I want to see what 10 chesters can look like. So there's uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okie doke. So we have this entire herd of chesters running after us now. Now keep in mind that uh, there was nobody else playing the game with me, otherwise it would be possible for every single one of those players to craft 10 of their own chesters. Now you might be wondering what is the point in having so many chesters if you're just going to fill up your inventory with all these eye bones. Well guess what, we can put eye bones inside other chesters. As a matter of fact, we could just like stick all of them, all these eye bones into one single chester and then they would all follow that chester. So I'm sort of interested in how many eye bones that can actually move into other chesters before they stop following me. So there you can see, currently two chesters are hanging in the back. So that means I have two bones that I surrendered to other chesters that I do not control directly. Let's put a few more bones in a chester and see how many will actually follow me now. Yeah. So there you get sort of a little train effect going on here where I have about three eye bones in my inventory. So three chesters initially are following me, but then we have uh, each of the, one of those three uh, chesters or just one or just two of them. I forget how many have their, they have the other chesters eye bones in them. So then those chesters are following these three chesters. And then one of, one of those chesters in the pack has one chester following it. So it's this crazy long line of a whole bunch of chesters that are following me. Now, uh, obviously, the mod itself is limited to 10, but you can mod the mod and pretty much make the number unlimited. I have no idea what the maximum would be before the game actually breaks down because just too many too many things moving around the map, I imagine. But uh, that would be an interesting thing to test out. So right there is your little, your little herd of chesters. Obviously, everybody gets access to chesters with this mod. Uh, so in other words, if you have six players in the game, and each one of them can craft 10 chesters, you have a potential of having 60 chesters on the map at one given time. Uh, each chester can be used by other players and their eye bones can be picked up, but the player is limited themselves to that many. The only reason I can craft more is actually because I have creative mode enabled, which pretty much unlocks all the crafting for me at no actual resource cost, which is a nice little utility that I can use to speed up the production of these types of videos. As some of the notes for this Chester for Everyone mod, it says allows each player to obtain a configurable amount of Chesters via finding the eye bone in the world or crafting it at a configurable crafting station or no crafting station, as I you saw demonstrated with this uh, demonstration, uh, and with a configurable recipe. This automatically removes the crafting recipe from the player's craftable recipe list once the player has reached the maximum eye bones, thus preventing players from crafting useless eye bones. Players are allowed to pick up other players' eye bones, but not unclaimed eye bones. This is compatible with existing worlds with Chester. Players' Chesters and eye bones are saved with the player and not the world. So I imagine as the player is removed from the world, the Chesters will be removed along with them. The recipe levels are as follows. Easy requires two twigs, one rope, and two gold. Medium requires one living log, one rope, one gold, and one nightmare fuel. Hard requires two living logs, one rope, two gears, two nightmare fuel, and I guess that would be very hard. Requires one living log, one rope, one deer clops eyeball, and one nightmare fuel. This mod works with caves, 
and chesters are restricted to the overworld only, just like the normal game. So that covers this week's Don't Starve Together a Mod Light. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions on how the episode could be improved or if you'd like to nominate a mod yourself, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll see if I can get around to answering it. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.